What is up guys? Welcome to Natsini's vlogbook. I feel like I haven't made any useful videos in a while. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how I'm surviving my PhD so far. Before we start, let me introduce myself a little bit. My name is Natsini Kitmunchu. I am a fourth year physics PhD student here at the Australian National University. PhD in Australia takes four years, so yeah, this is my final year. This hole right here is getting bigger and bigger. I feel like part of my toes is about to poke out. So I've been seeing many tweets from grad students on Twitter on how their mental health are being ruined by grad school and I too have been under a lot of stress but so far I haven't gone insane and haven't had a need to visit a psychologist yet I was getting there So here are the few tips that I do that I find helpful and maybe, just maybe, they'll be helpful for you as well And here comes tip number one. Write down what is causing you stress. Very important. There's a lot going on in PhD. And if those two do's pile up in your head in a chaotic manner, eventually you will go insane. A psychologist once told me to write down a list of things that worry me on a sticky note. And first I thought that was just like a kiddie trick, but it actually helped because once all these problems are written down, they are much easier to organize and dealt with. Ask yourself what is driving you insane right now and the thing that drives you insane the most is gonna go on top of your sticky note list and you deal with that one first. Eventually everything will be crossed off and you will feel like your life is under control. So yeah, if you worry about multiple things at the same time, maybe try writing it down. Tip number two, do not count work hours. Counting work hours sounds horrible when you're working 15, 16 hours a day for many, many days. But uh, this also applies when you work like four, five, six hours a day. Work as much as you feel content and spend time with your hobbies. I personally try to set a small goal for myself every day, so I feel like I'm pushing forward every day. It feels good to accomplish something. It's like hiking. When you get to one viewing point, there's always gonna be another one and another one after that until you reach the summit or the end of the trail. So instead of looking straight at the finish line, perhaps set your goal to visit a smaller viewpoints here and there. This led us to tip number three. Tip number three, manage your goal slash deadline. So we talked about little viewpoints before you actual submit. You need to plan when to visit these little viewpoints along the way. And eventually you need to have a plan of when you want to reach the summit or the end of the trail. If you have a deadline of when you need to reach the end point of your PhD, write down the to-do list on the calendar and estimate how long they will take you. I find putting these things on paper calendar actually help me get a better sense of time, like better sense of how much time I have left. It's like looking at the watch with the hands versus the digital watch. I don't know, maybe I'm just old school. Here's an example scenario. My scholarship, for example, my scholarship has a four-year deadline for international students and that is a hard deadline. Currently, I have eight months left. I know it would take me three months to write and it would take another three months for the panel slash whoever is gonna review my thesis to finish reviewing my thesis. So, which means roughly two months from now, I have to be out of the lab and start writing. This applies even if you don't have a hard graduation deadline. Creating an artificial deadline could prevent you from dragging your PhD for longer than it is necessary. And trust me, it's definitely nice to be paid with money outside PhD been there done that so tell your advisor when you want to get out and he or she should be able to tell you what you need to do and whether or not your goal is realistic and a bonus tip write a diary I write a quick diary every week 
for myself and those who sign up for it on Patreon. I will post the link in the description below. A diary helps me keep track of my mental health status and know its pattern better. Some week I feel up, some week I feel down. And if these ups and downs have a pattern that can be predicted, it is not as bad as you think. During the down week, I would cut myself some slack because I know that in a week or two, I'll be up and motivated again. And if my mood stays down for longer than it should, then I know that something is wrong and I probably should seek help. And that is the advantage of keeping a diary that keeps track of your mood and your mental health status. I think it's quite useful for me, maybe not for you, but just in case, try it. Doesn't hurt. And there you have it, three tips plus a bonus that I find useful for myself and hopefully it will be applicable for some of you guys as well. And that is all I have to share with you today. If there's anything that you want to hear me talk about that I haven't covered or have any questions, please let me know in the comment and I will do my best to answer all of them. If you enjoyed this video, please consider like and subscribe so that someday YouTube may pay me for my coffees and instant noodles. Thanks for watching guys, cheers! Today is a very nice day. I'm glad I came out to film instead of filming in my room. Otherwise, that would have been such a waste of photons.